The Guardian Underground Fence provides safe, comfortable, and effective containment of pets weighing 8 pounds or more. This instructional video will show you proper installation procedures and training techniques to ensure your best possible experience with the Guardian Underground Containment System. The system works by producing a radio signal transmitted from the fence transmitter through as much as 2,000 feet of boundary wire enclosing the pet area. Your pet wears a receiver collar with contact points touching the neck and can be easily trained to stay within the pet area. When your pet strays into the warning zone, the receiving collar gives a warning beep. If your pet continues into the static correction zone, a safe static correction will be delivered through the contact points until he returns to the pet area. You're about to learn how to install the Guardian system, how to train your pet to use it, and troubleshooting tips. Take a look at the components of your Guardian system. Here are some additional items you may need to install the Guardian system. Now let's get started. Review these key definitions to familiarize yourself with the system. First, place the fence transmitter in a dry, well-ventilated, protected place where temperatures don't fall below freezing. This might be in a garage, shed, basement, or closet. Keep the transmitter at least three feet from large metal objects or appliances, as these items may interfere with the signal consistency. Design a layout that's suitable for your yard. Just remember that the boundary wire must start at the fence transmitter and make a continuous loop back. Twisting the wire cancels the signal and allows your pet to cross over that area safely. Plastic or metal piping will not cancel the signal. The maximum length of twisted wire is 50 feet. Watch out for sharp turns, which can cause gaps in your boundary. Avoid laying out passageways that are too narrow for your pet to move about freely. And if you run the wire close to an outside wall of the house, remember to take off the receiving collar before bringing your pet inside. Fence planning software is available online at www.petsafe.net forward slash fence. Click on the free software link. After you have planned and saved your layout online, our customer care center can review and refine your layout. Here are some layouts. This layout allows your pet to freely and safely roam your entire property. It can be adapted to protect your landscaping and pool. This layout includes your existing fence as part of the layout and keeps your pet from digging under the fence. It reduces the amount of wire which will need to be buried. A double loop may be used when you are not establishing the boundary zone on all sides of your property. When using a double loop, the boundary wire must be separated by a minimum of 3 to 5 feet to avoid canceling the signal. Remember that a double loop will require twice as much wire. This layout shows a boundary zone in the front or backyard only. This layout shows a front boundary only. This layout shows a boundary with lake access. This layout shows a wire loop attached to an existing fence and keeps your pet from digging under the fence. Lay out the wire and test the system before burying the wire. Start by running the boundary wire out the window or vent or through a 1 8 inch drilled hole between the fence transmitter and the outdoors. Running the wire parallel to and within 5 feet of electrical wires, buried cables, telephone wires, Satellite dishes or neighboring containment systems can produce an inconsistent signal. If you must cross any of these, do so at a 90 degree angle. The table indicates the approximate length of boundary wire needed for a rectangular, single loop layout based on the size of the pet area. Additional wire can be purchased and spliced. If you need additional boundary wire to expand your wire loop, you will need to splice the wires together. 
Note the locations of all splices for future reference. Most boundary wire breaks occur at splices. Strip approximately one half inch of insulation off the ends of the boundary wires to be spliced. Make sure the copper boundary wire is not corroded. Cut it back to expose clean copper wire. Insert the stripped ends into the wire nut and twist the wire nut around the wires. Pull on the wires to make sure you have a strong splice connection. Apply waterproofing compound in and around the wire nut or wrap the wires and the wire nuts with electrical tape to prevent moisture from corroding the copper. If your splice pulls loose, the entire system will fail. Make sure your splice is secure. Once you've completed your continuous loop back to the fence transmitter, strip the ends of the boundary wire approximately a half inch. Then insert the ends into the boundary wire terminals in the fence transmitter. For additional protection, you may purchase a lightning protection kit through the Customer Care Center at 1-866-381-2785, U.S., or 1-800-457-2785. 3911 Canada The Lightning Protection Kit protects the system against surges that travel through the power source and or the boundary wire. Turn the boundary width control knob to 10, which will set the warning zone to the maximum width. Then plug the power adapter into both the power jack and your 120 volt house current. The power light and loop indicator lights should come on. In preparing the receiver collar, first install the batteries, but not while the collar is on your pet. With the edge of the test light tool, turn the battery door counterclockwise. Before inserting the batteries, make sure the battery door is clean. Install two 3-volt batteries, positive side out, under the positive battery contact. Replace the battery door. Now, set the correction level, which is levels 1 through 3. Press the correction level button and release it when the receiver indicator light comes on. The receiver indicator light will emit a number of flashes to represent the numeric correction level. Refer to the function and response table to choose the static correction level that best fits your pet. The receiver is equipped with anti-linger feature. If the collar is set at level 2, it will automatically increase the static correction level the longer your pet stays in the static correction zone. The receiver indicator light acts as a low battery indicator, flashing every 5 seconds when battery replacement is required. Use the boundary width control knob to set the width of the warning zone and static correction zone. Set the boundary width as wide as possible to give your pet the widest warning and static correction zones without reducing the pet area too much. The boundary width control knob does not change the static correction level. If it doesn't beep at the desired range, turn the boundary width control knob to the desired setting. Repeat this activity as needed until the receiver collar beeps at the desired distance from the boundary wire. The numbers on the boundary width control knob indicate signal strength and are not representative of boundary width footage. If using a double loop, you may need to increase the separation of the boundary wire to achieve the desired range. To test the collar, set the static correction level to 2 or higher and hold the test light contacts to the contact points while approaching the boundary wire holding the collar at your pet's neck level. The receiver collar should beep in the warning zone. If it doesn't beep at the desired range, adjust the boundary width control knob to achieve your desired range. As you enter the static correction zone, the receiver collar should tick and the test light flash, indicating a static correction. To bury the boundary wire, use a shovel or lawn edger to dig a trench one to three inches deep along your boundary layout. Place the wire in the trench, allowing some slack to accommodate expansion and contraction with temperature variations. Or the wire can be weaved into an existing metal or wooden fence. To cross a concrete driveway or sidewalk, place the boundary wire in a convenient expansion joint or create a groove using a circular saw and masonry blade. Place the boundary wire in the groove and cover with an appropriate patching compound. For best